corporate structuring is a very important aspect of the business especially when somebody is starting a business they should structure their business in a proper legal manner what kind of entity they should start where is the destination they should start the business what kind of license they should take up and how the shareholding has to be allotted and how the control mechanism has to be managed all these kind of things are very very crucial when somebody starts a business hello and welcome everyone now we are starting our new episode of super lawyer at youtube channel with mr ajmal khan nadakal sir is based in dubai and he has more than two decades of experience he has a wealth of expertise in setting up regulated and non regulated firms all across europe africa and the far east as well as in major cities and states in india he has a proven track record of handling complex corporate issues including compliance and anti money laundering policies taxation matters and real estate transactions to name a few so welcome and thank you for accepting our invitation to be here we would like to start our journey of question and answer by asking you what inspired you to pursue your career in law and please share your story of reaching to the top thank you sir and welcome once again thank you thank you very much see i am a first generation lawyer there are no other lawyers in my family and my family circle also so from school days i had a passion to become a lawyer i don't know exactly what all are the reasons for it but definitely one teacher he really influenced me and he is the person who persuaded me to become a lawyer so from that days i was always thinking how to become a lawyer and then after pre degree i tried my law exams entrance exam and got into the college and definitely it was not an accident i should be honest i came to this profession by choice thank you sir for being so honest and candid with this so when this was an inspired choice and you made it with all the diligence what prompted your decision to transition from practicing law in india then to dubai as well after my college i started my career in my local courts i am in district court manjeri i practiced for almost 6 7 years there manjeri perindalmana courts then i got an opportunity to switch to in house legal counsel in bangalore in fact that is the reason where i got to a different domain of legal field so when i took up that opportunity i got lot of exposure i traveled a lot across india to handle various complex legal issues for the group to meet regulatory authorities also i traveled outside india for investment facilitations regulatory setting ups then also to liaison with various international law firms for handling their legal issues this gave me a really good exposure and then i felt international legal opportunities are bigger and i should explore more if i get an opportunity and luckily again i got an opportunity in ua then i took up that assignment and came to dubai that is how my shifting has happened so sir what all difference have you seen in the kind of practice we do in india as lawyers and the kind of practice you may have seen in dubai and when you compare these two how do you support this transition let's say if someone obviously wants to move what kind of lookout they should have in making that transition because you have smoothly sailed this so we would request you to share your story about that yeah definitely see indian legal system is more traditional which derived from different customs and different complex laws it took centuries to evolve that legal system so it has its plus and minus also we always carry that baggage of our history even in the legal system which causes lot of you know delay in the legal proceedings and complexities all this are there even though now we are trying big changes by technology ventures and all but still indian legal system is too complex and people are facing lot of difficulties especially the delay in the litigation dispute resolution then red tape is some everywhere we cannot avoid this this is the problem and when i switch to ua this is not carrying much history this is a new law and new entities new legal system it was sharia backed legal system but when the international business opportunities came to uae and other rulers were really pushing the business opportunities and trying to be the global hub 
the same time they developed the legal system and the laws also to that standard very fast developing and technologically advanced and which always cater the needs of the business people they gave priority to the business people who are going to come to uae and invest so accordingly they made the changes very rapidly and when a person is taking such uh, strong decision there is nothing to curtail that speed because one person can take the decision here and not much complexities so that is the major difference here it's all new it's all transparent very fast and the legal dispute resolution is very fast people get a solution to their problem when they are approaching courts and dispute resolution authorities very fast this helps them to continue with their business further in our place sometimes it takes decades especially the family disputes and all so these are the major difference i could feel in the two domains again somebody wanted to shift from india to dubai my advice is a lot of opportunities are there here and you can cater the world and you can feel the world and legal complexities here because almost all the nationalities are here their disputes are there their personal issues are there their business disputes are there now because of the estate planning and foundation trust and all so people from different part of the world is setting up the foundation and trust here because of the easy environment so this all giving lot of opportunities to new lawyers the only thing is they have to be very fast in upgrading themselves and follow the new development in the legal field especially with the help of technology technological advancement is also very much required which is something the indian legal system is still not that advanced and even the law colleges in india they are also behind in this so these are the things they should always keep in mind when they are planning to switch to dubai so thank you for sharing that you have talked quite a bit about dispute resolution mechanism as well and you specialize in managing these disputes especially related to commodity derivative trading investments forex gold and bullion trading as well we would request you to elaborate a little bit about these areas and their significance in the legal field sir because it is an absolute niche of the niche field and most of us are eager to understand these fields and try and see the future in it correct correct see i was also very new to this domain when i joined the in house in bangalore but that group whom i associated they were into online trading forex commodity derivatives securities and that kind of a domain so obviously i happen to handle lot of that kind of complex issues disputes crisis management and also i learned about trading what is forex trading what is leverage trading and what is futures trading all these things i was forced to learn in fact i would say i started an account and lost some money and learned because without a practical training this is almost impossible i realized after an year or two then i was really struggling to cope with this environment so i decided to start an account and trade because that gave me lot of insights how the positions has to be taken how the leverage trading happens how the margins are called for these kind of things so this gave me lot of inputs when i switched to dubai and started my legal career the legal profession here this really helped me because uae is also a place of online trading leverage trading and all people sitting here are trading across in the different platforms across the world and also here and here though there is a clear regulation about how the online trading licensing and regulation which all has to happen still people are using shortcut methods and opening up fishy companies taking people money and then vanishing so a lot of people lost their money because they don't know what this regulation they are just fantasized with this leverage trading and the opportunity to make big money the marketing people always give them the positive and they never give them the negative so they open the account and start trading then in the demo they will show some profits then in real time they will lose they can't even pump in for the margin calls so obviously they will lose the money so many such disputes came and which came to me so as a person who understand this domain whenever a client comes and discuss this with me 
we will get the synergy and i could manage lot of such disputes in many of the issues i managed to get back their money and in some the accused were convicted and definitely in many of the cases the people who vanished we cannot do much but still we can educate the people and also the companies who wanted to regulate and do it in a streamlined way they also started approaching us because of the domain knowledge so this has become a real opportunity for me and also my team members learned a lot about this leverage trading and domain now we started a division where we are setting up regulated entities in uae and abroad because of this domain knowledge so you are explaining everything in terms which can be understood easily and it is making more impact so your expertise lies in all these niche fields next question will definitely be around your experience which is in corporate structuring and restructuring what kind of critical factors do you consider while dealing in these subjects because they are definitely out of reach of most of us we don't understand that or it is not taught in schools or colleges now how do you see that platform can be built in order to make sure that these subjects reach to most of the students so that you also get a little workforce because as i can understand having that kind of niche of the niche you end up having very limited number of people with that understanding so how do you see that happening any time sooner in future see corporate structuring is a very important aspect of the business especially when somebody is starting a business they should structure their business in a proper legal manner what kind of entity they should start where is the destination they should start the business what kind of license they should take up and how the shareholding has to be allotted and how the control mechanism has to be managed all these kind of things are very very crucial when somebody starts a business so since we have lot of this experience we are able to advise all the entrepreneurs properly how to structure their business in the initial phase here one thing in uae most of the people who came here in 70s 80s and 90s so most of them are not much educated they came here chasing their dreams they faced lot of struggles hardships in the initial phase they worked and then they started a small business with whatever available corporate structure that time what was available the legal corporate structure then they started it like a civil company or a sole establishment and then the business really grew fast beyond their imagination sometimes the many of the big big businesses here it all started like that so when they reach to this stage now only they are thinking when the next generation is going to be onboarded that time they are thinking oh my legal structure is not intact and i should make some changes to this this is a very critical position because already the business is loaded a lot of exposure is there from here if they want to restructure their existing legal company system and all this need a real advice a proper advice with experience only experienced persons can do that because they need real time examples so here also we advise lot of clients now who are passing the business to the next generation how to structure the holding company how to create foundation and trust to manage their will and wish in the subsequent generations and if the next generation is not interested in the business and a working partner is on board how to structure the company in that way and how to create an isop by stimulating the business through that channel so these are all things we really need proper advice so here definitely our experience this is all my experience and my team experience we gathered from this last 10 14 years of real time experience in dubai so that helps a lot you started as a first generation lawyer and now you own a company which works for all these corporate structuring restructuring and licensing agreements we would request you to elaborate on that as well yeah sure i was part of a local law firm as a partner for the last 10 plus years then recently last year we got a license of legal consultancy in abu dhabi which is named APS Partners Legal Consultancy otherwise the mainland was not allowing legal consultancy licenses so this is a recent development and we are one of the very few lawyers who got this license in our name so in that we strategize these kind of activities especially this corporate structuring estate planning 
regulatory licensing, trademarks and intellectual laws, all these specific areas, especially the central bank licensing, crypto licensing, VARA and other regulatory ESCA. So those kind of activities we do in that legal consultancy license, which is based in Abu Dhabi. So about the ABS partners, which is doing this kind of work, and you are one of the very first lawyers you have got in Dubai. The kind of transition you have seen when you were doing it in India as Indian lawyer and when you are doing it in Dubai. And another question to add to it is, when has it started? Because if I remember correctly, very recently Dubai has introduced its legal system, I suppose in January this year or something. So yeah. would you care to elaborate on that as well, please? In UAE, Dubai and Abu Dhabi are the major hubs. So Dubai is still very strict on issuing legal consultancy license in the mainland to foreign lawyers. They have a regulation, but it is a bit stringent. It is not easy to get a license there unless we have three international branches and all. But Abu Dhabi relaxed it a bit in the last year. So we got a license almost a year back now. It was last year they introduced this and uh, maybe... The second or third license is issued in our name. So uh, we should have 10 plus years standing in UAE. So me and my partners all are having this uh, eligibility criteria. So we applied and got it. And now we are uh, developing that to a different level, to a niche area. I have to cater the niche area, which is not you know much explored by the other lawyers and law firms. So congratulations on doing so and being amongst the very first few to be able to cater to corporates. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, while you are doing all these things which are very much corporate centric, you must be going through a lot of mediation and conflict resolution techniques also. How do you make sure that you employ the effective techniques for these and what kind of further assistance do you provide? Because in mediation, it's not only the end of the case. It's like it is just a kind of start if there is any conflict over there. So how do you cater to such clients? And there are clients who must be very, very very big and not that approachable how do you make sure that everything is done in the best manner possible for them see basically we are business lawyers so we have a very good connect in the business world so obviously when some issues happen some disputes happen they will ask us the options for solutions so obviously always the first method is try to amicably settle the dispute. So while getting into amicable settlement area, I always try to understand the client psychology. We need to understand what is the client's situation as of now. What is his financial capacity or whether he is really in a bad shape uh, or this dispute is derived from an ego of uh, the business house. This kind of initial knowledge we need to gather. Then only we can effectively mediate a dispute. So when it comes, ultimately, what I realized is everybody, if we can convince them properly to avoid a lengthy litigation and a time-consuming process, they will always try to find a way for mediation and settlements. Only thing in the mediation and settlement, we should not have any agenda. We should try to resolve the matter in accordance with the requirements of both the people. So there, our expertise and experience again, we can give different options. If one option is not comfortable for the person, we can give another option. This is all by experience. You know, by experience, we can give different options and scenarios where we can effectively do dispute resolutions. And we have done quite a lot of such dispute resolutions. as Sir, if possible, can you share any kind of case which can be very educating for learners as well, if at all you can? Yeah, recently one scenario is there where, you know, a local stake is involved. So the local was very much adamant. The other people were the actual investors, but the local was just a sponsor, but with some agreed terms. So this was a big business house and this was almost on a deadlock because both were fighting. So when it came to me, I tried to understand what is the actual reason behind this local person's issue. Then I realized he has a genuine cause for this because whatever the investors agreed with him initially, this was not honored. Conveniently, local was not asking, not demanding, so they were not giving as well. But when they are parting the partnership, obviously he asks, okay, whatever right I have, what is committed by you, you have to honor this. 
then i convinced the other party instead of losing the entire business for a small amount this is his right you should honor it because all these years almost 20 25 years he did justice it was in his name but still he helped you in all way to build your empire so this kind of convincing at last that happened the dispute was settled very smoothly and they are good friends also even now so i am just a reason for it actually there is not much difference between them so this is where sometimes a mediator is required so those roles we can effectively play by knowing the psychology of the people that's it so i was about to say that one has to learn about psychology the way you are speaking it comes with experience and absolute understanding about what to say when to say it all makes sense so in all this there is a lot of technology disruption happening even in the legal field worldwide how do you see it is going to work out for us lawyers on national and international platform both as well as what kind of areas do you see are going to come up or are already there which are bringing a different kind of practice even in business laws or in business entities yeah this is the era of technology change actually you know the web3 blockchain and ai which is making lot of changes in the world so legal is not an exception there are lot of things happening in the legal world as well in the legal profession as well so obviously the lawyers who are running on this profession in that fast space by adopting this technology change they can only survive so my advice to the young generation of lawyers they should adopt this technological change very fast they should be the first runner otherwise we will be out from the race especially ai is making lot of job loss in the legal profession but to me as i realize ai is also giving lot of opportunities to lawyers you know precedence search the formats many of the things especially the legal research everything is made very easy now because of the ai advancement so these kind of things the new lawyers should learn they should be very fast in learning the new technology as well the blockchain the web3 now it is going to be a different era with web3 so these technology adoptions they should do and then cope with the new trends in the law and in the technology given that kind of philosophies and kind of thought process that you are sharing even about ai or technology disruption it seems very very positive and optimistic so how have you driven your life with these kind of philosophies and would you care to share some of them with us for us to get inspired as well how have you lived your life and how have you achieved all this in your legal career see i am not a technology man or technologically advanced guy but what i do is i employ associates with good knowledge of technology and i learn from them there is no hesitation for learning from the juniors when it comes to technology because they are my masters on this so there is no ego on this we should learn from the new generation my son teaches me about the new technology my daughter teaches me about this so this should be our approach when we are not good in something we should learn from who is good in this that is one thing then about the philosophy of my career we should be very transparent and we should not compromise our professional ethics however rewarding the other opportunity is there we should not compromise our professional ethics if we compromise that will give you a, some gain short term gain but it will never give you a long term mileage your professional advancement is possible only when you build a reputation that is very crucial which i always try to stick on oh sir what a positive note you have added on that note sir i would like to request you to share your principle or your policy or your thought when it comes to work life balance especially when you are a busy professional and you are absolutely busy with some legal issue going on how do you make sure that you have your own time for your mental health for your personal life and obviously for other activities as well no no the personal space for my family my small entertainments and all i always kept that space from beginning itself i like traveling i like hindi songs then family time i always try to find time for this even though my family will always complain <laughs> but still <laughs> 
I'm always trying to find some time, especially two days in a week. I always try to give family time. So thank you so much for such positive thoughts and sharing it with us. And it has been a learning experience that there are certain niche fields which our learners can look up to and can reach out to you as well. And uh, once again, thank you for agreeing to be on Super Lawyer YouTube channel. And it has been a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.